Hello everyone, it's Ethan from the Orlando Tours at Universal Orlando on Tuesday, August 30th. We were here last night filming outside of the park gate. Um, they were doing rehearsals for the opening ceremonies, testing out um, audio and park-wide loop and stuff, all the for Har Halloween Horror Nights. And we have a lot of props and scare zone stuff to check out today while we're here. And we also have the mummy that's soft opening, so we finally get to ride it. It's been closed for a while. So um, I'm really excited, we have a lot to show you guys today around the park. National Frankenstein Day, they're selling a special Frankenstein popcorn bucket. Also, we were just at SeaWorld, so if you're interested in Hallow Scream updates, we just filmed one over there. So definitely check out that video as well. But uh, let's head in. I'm just gonna add this clip in because I forgot. But this is my final Horror Night update before the event starts. So stay tuned. As we head into City Walk, you can see that the Red Coconut Club is transforming to the Dead Coconut Club. We covered this in our last few videos with featuring monsters. We'll check it again on the way out tonight. Over here in City Walk, we have a bunch of merch in the main studio store for Halloween Horror Nights, which we also covered in the last video. Um, we have the giant Frankenstein buckets for $38 and the first refill is free. A bunch of Halloween merchandise, some lounge flies, everything in here. I don't think they had the Studio Screamer figures in here. I think they've sold out of those. Plenty of Frankenstein buckets for National Frankenstein Day today. And lots of other Horror Night merch. This is the house shirt for this year. And they also have the Little Boo Sippers for $18. It's pretty much it though right now in this store. We also have merch now in the Carson City Walk. Well, the same merch we've already seen. They have it in these little carts here for Halloween Horror Nights. Plaque, the house shirt, lots of cool stuff. So like, we heard the whole opening ceremonies audio yesterday and we heard a lot. So if you wanna see all that, check out that last video. You won't be disappointed at all. But we're coming up on the arch now. We saw it at night yesterday. We've not seen it during the day until now. We'll show you guys what it looks like. And here we're coming up on the arches. Tomorrow's team member preview. Thursday's nothing. And then Friday is when the event starts. We're three days away. I can't wait. It's gonna be so awesome. But yeah, so in the center, the medallion is a moon. It's a red full moon. The, the event is from September 2nd to October 31st. They just announced some food items today. And we have the Monsters House, Halloween, The Weekend, and Blumhouse. Those are our four IP houses this year. Let's head into the park now. Over here, we have some speakers set up for the opening ceremony. I don't think they're actually like... I don't see anything else updated in that spot since our last update. Last year they had pyro there. I don't see any like pyro stuff on the building yet, but uh, we'll keep you updated if we see any fire stuff added. Ooh, they're filming in the streets today, hot set in production. But we are going to start over in Hollywood. Before we go in Hollywood, let's see if they have any new merch in here. I wonder if they have the Studio Screamers here in the main gift shop. They have the popcorn buckets and the Studio Screamers in here. The Studio Screamers were just put out yesterday. And then they have, of course, all your other Horror Night merch. They have little boost zippers and everything else. Studio Screamers are $18 again this year, and these are the figures. Casper is the limited edition chaser. But yeah, we might have to collect those this year. This zone looks amazing. It's the Horrors of Halloween. We're gonna come back and check that out later. We saw some rehearsal stuff going on in that zone with Pumpkin Lord. But uh, let's start in the Graveyard Deadly and Rest Scare zone. And we have posted a video on my channel where we go through my hype list for all the attractions, or all the, the houses this year. So definitely check that out if you're interested. See, nothing new has really been added to the uh, this zone. Still really excited for it. We're supposed to have like undead creatures, like zombies, skeletons, maybe ghosts. It'll be a really fun zone. I'm excited to see how it turns out. It's all the characters in here. 
But yeah, these stairs are still just there with no other props right now. So maybe they'll roll some extra props out into the zone. We'll find out soon enough. And while the tribute store is preparing to open, you can purchase your portrait to get in the store for $130. Here we have all the merchandise at the entrance. It's the same merchandise we've had in this store. Nothing new has been added. I'm assuming a lot more merchandise is gonna come out once the tribute store opens. But yeah. Pass holder appreciation days is going on right now until September 31st. You can pick up your mummy magnet in the pass holder lounge, or you can get it in the um, Tune Extra store in Islands of Adventure. And the prop shop's been closed for a while. Rumor is that it might be an Epic Universe preview center or a Nintendo World preview center for Epic Universe. And the trivia store is uh, slated to open on uh, this Wednesday for team member previews, so tomorrow. And then the Thursday after, and then this Friday will be open for pass holders and normal guests. We might even have a special pass holder event on September 1st. And that's the night before Horror Nights. They might have some like food tents open during the day and the tribute store open for pass holders and maybe even normal guests too. Beetlejuice is meeting guests outside a horror makeup show. And we also have some moss outside of Cafe La Bamba. And then we have the Ghoulish a Halloween Tail. That's the entrance for the Lagoon show this year. They covered up the signage with the show times. This zone has seen a lot of updates since our last time we were here. We have a lot of new theming on the barn and more scarecrows. Um, food tents, we did cover them in our last video. We've gone through all the menus, so we're not going to cover this today. Make sure you look through our last video. This wind was awesome. We have some scarecrows over here, new theming by the truck, and more of a full barn setup over here. This looks awesome. Stages in the zone here for scare actors, and then scare actors are going to be in the bottom too. This zone is really taking shape now. As we continue in the zone, we have lanterns in the trees which will be lit up at night. More scarecrows over here. The lighting might be a little hard to see it. We have lots of corn over here too in the zone. It's really neat. This shack has the same fake wood that Wicked Growth had at the beginning of the fence. This could be a flamethrower. I don't know what that box is covered up. Uh, cool theming on this shack. More scarecrows. We also have pumpkins in the cart now. And more sif at the exit of that shack. More theming along the fences. More plants and everything. And this is some really cool theming over here as well. Um, let's show you a closer look at those last two scarecrows as well. Fog machines are everywhere in the zone too. But yeah, these are some cool, creepy looking scarecrows in the zone. Here's also a look at the barn from the backside. So like we've already covered all this stuff. So we're just gonna keep heading around the rest of the park, but like menus have we've already talked about them. Some people have got early uh, food samplings. We have tables over here by these food tents though. Something I almost forgot about is we have house portals up. Entrances for all the houses, so let's go show you them. Also more food tables here. So if you look at my guide on how to beat, or how to complete all 10 houses in one night, you will um, know what I'm talking about if you use that video with this one. So this is the entrance to uh, where Hill House was last year. This one's gonna be the weekend. And then this one over here is going to be for Universal Monsters Legends Collide. You can even see the little mummy peeking out in the center. Let me get a little closer. There he is. But yeah, so that's where Beetlejuice was last year. There is a Stay and Scream in Central Park, which allowed guests to enter these houses like 10 minutes before the event opened to everyone else. And I highly recommend doing these first and then doing the back tents or starting with the back two tents. And we're going to show you those next. It looks like they added some cool decor on the side of this food tent. We also have decor like wheels on the bottom here and more tools on this side. I think these lights are all red because of Horror Nights at this food stand. And here we have the Chucky food tent. A lot of cool Chucky theming on this tent. As we continue to head through Springfield, these guys are still missing the police car with the chief officer. They're missing just for a brief refurbishment. Nothing Horror Nights related. Um, we're gonna keep heading through this area, but this is gonna have a roaming chainsaw horde this year We're having it back and it will most likely be in Springfield. So like if you were here last year, this is a dead spot in the park It's gonna be filled this year. It actually looks kind of crowded in some parts of studios today I noticed that islands is a little quieter, but we'll see how it is today I wonder if it's because of the mummy soft opening or just everyone's here and traveling We'll figure it out I guess 
we have uh, another house portal over here and um, this is a, just a drink tent which we covered before we head on Men in Black I want to show you some cool stuff so this tent is in the entrance location of where Wicked Growth was last year and this was the puppet theater tent area there's no entrance to where puppet theater was instead what they're doing this year is this house entrance will lead to the same location as where puppet theater was and then the wicked growth entrance has moved to where the men in black tent was where scary ohio you can see it down there we're going to show you guys that after men in black so this entrance is going not going to be for bug house even though it's in the same location as where wicked growth was this is going to be for the descendants of destruction they just moved the entrances around and then the bug house entrance is going to be all the way down there and you're going to be walking behind the men in black attraction and over here we have a new horror nights merchandise cart all lit up with displayed items same ones that they had in city walk nothing new over here except we do have screamers at this location and yeah that's pretty much it for the merchandise looks like in the men in black gift shop they are selling the frankensteins and some Halloween Horror Nights merchandise as well, some candy, the Frankenstein buckets are here, and we have this brand new monster shirt with the rest of some Horror Nights merchandise, candles which we smelled the last time we were here, some socks, another design on that shirt, it's pretty neat. So uh, let's ride uh, Men in Black now, let's see if we can max out today. Just got off Men in Black and I did actually max out before the bonus. I have a whole guide on my channel on how to do that. And we're coming up on the entrance to the bug house. Bugs eating alive. Um, we just call it bug house for short. Um, it's going to be the old scary Ohio entrance from last year. Men in Black tent. They're not having a tent at Men in Black this year though. They're supposed to tear down Fear Factor and uh, use that plot of land so we're not getting a house. Um, Fear Factor is going to be home to the Nightmare Fuel Wildfire. Looks like we have a queue set up outside for this showing. Um, the first showing will be tomorrow during team member preview. But yeah, this is really neat. They don't have a sign up here yet. I'm assuming tomorrow morning we will get one. Here's another bar tent. And then we have red lights on the bathrooms over there for Horror Nights. So over here we have the Chucky photo op in the same spot it was here last year. This little courtyard area between Men in Black and uh, Simpsons. It's just a photo op. It's going to be free. It'll have a little blast of air to scare you while it takes your photo. And then this food tent is all lit up, but they still don't have any menus on it at the moment. Yeah. Over here, we have some runes. And the runes are uh, just uh, some bar theming in this area. We have a witch scare zone right outside of here. So this uh, bar is just themed to be like witches and a coven and stuff. We did cover this last time, but this will be a nice hangout spot once Horror Night starts. As you can see, we have a lot of comfy chairs and everything set up in this area as well. We also have some cool theming on the shelves for this bar area. This zone only has a couple minor changes. This one is for uh, Conjure the Dark. It's a witch-themed scare zone. We have some new plants and uh, theming added to that rock structure. Some more vines and stuff over here. But yeah, a lot of the same props and stuff. Something wrapped up on the stage. We don't think it's a body. Um, and we have something also wrapped up on this rune. And then this one over here. And then other than that, we just have a couple more vine and like plants added over here. On these rune structures. Yeah, these look really cool though. Yeah, no other updates in the zone. We're coming over to our next house location. This is the uh, replacement spot for the Men in Black tent. Instead, we have a tent at Fast and the Furious. And this is supposed to be the Blum House. So we're going to go show you guys the entrance. And there it is, the house portal. It's definitely Blum House. You can see through the, the crack in the curtain. Also, we passed by this food uh, food truck, and we did show you guys that last video. We have a food tent, or like alcoholic tent over here. And we have a lot of stuff going on in New York, so let's break it down for you guys. Louis is where Scare Actor Dining is going to be this year. Um, it's like a buffet style thing. Scare actors interact with you. 
We're going to actually go inside and see if we can see some props and decorations already set up. As you can see, we have some pumpkins by the, uh, the counters over here. Pumpkins. We have some more pumpkins. And then other than that, I don't see anything else except this little display. Let's take a photo off with Halloween. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that's it for the Louis with their decorations right now. We have some props that were set up yesterday in this zone that are sort of new. We have on um, these pumpkin looking traditional Halloween kind of decor. This is for the uh, Sweet Revenge Scare Zone, so it's going to be like these trick or treaters in this uh, Halloween parade festival. And they're all mutated by this candy that's poisoned. Yeah, lots of cool little pumpkin props. I'm hoping these will be lit up, but I don't know if they have lights inside them or not. They might, I have no clue. Let's show you guys down over here though, by the meat's locker, which we now have a fence spot. So we have a whole menu over here. Lots of stuff going on. This fencing is new though. Looks like they're getting ready. They're just practicing. So they might have. Hey, this may or may not be a photo op, but we will find out. We have a display of some of the gummy beating hearts. As you can see, no more Blues Brothers stage over here because we have the permanent one over here. This street is still halfway closed though as they're doing uh, pavement working. And we have more pumpkin statues here with the fog machine. And another one here, and another one here right by the entrance of Mummy. So Mummy's having soft openings or technical rehearsals tonight. The body in here, a couple more pumpkin statues, like four of them over here. And here's a sign for technical rehearsals, 50 minutes. Um, so if there's any breakdowns or they have to evac the ride and stuff, it's not working, it's not permanently open yet. Um, so there's going to be issues with the ride. And yeah, so just, it's not, don't expect it to be perfect just yet. So um, this street's been reopened with some food tents, we've already covered it. But um, let's show you guys these other pumpkins and the tribute store. And these little house portals before we enter mummy and over here we have some stuff wrapped up here's a set of pumpkins right over here this one's the bigger one and here's one over here too it's like as you enter the zone this entrance is for dead man's pure winter's wake and they do have a stay and scream in this area as well um you can kind of tell it's dead man's pure from the sign this one is supposed to be, trying to look through the slit, the legend of the Chupacabra, I'm pretty sure. This is the Chupacabra. And then this house entrance right over here should be for Halloween. Let's see. As you can see, you can see the Halloween letters, definitely for Halloween. And lastly, the tribute store over here. Um, it's all lit up. We have some signage on the side, words there to enter. Um, basically, the tribute store is opening for team member preview tomorrow, and then it should open for pass holders on Thursday, the day before the event, September 1st. And they're also probably going to have food for pass holders. So it's going to be a pass holder preview for the store and food. Yeah, it looks really neat. We have uh, this whole poster here you can read. Pause the screen to read it, and then we have this poster here, which talks about all the rooms in the tribute store, which is themed to a dark ride. You start in a pumpkin patch, then you go into a cemetery, and then you go into like a witch's hut room, and then the last one is themed to the Halloween festival, which ties into the scare zone. It looks like we have a microphone left over on the judges booth. I'm assuming Major Sweets is going to be talking to guests while we're in this zone. I've been saying to keep an eye out on the Sahara Trader store to give a sign of when Mummy's going to reopen, but it looks like Sahara Traders is the exact same as it was before. So we'll see if we see anything as we get off Mummy, but we're, uh, we're going to go and ride it now, and uh, we'll report back if we notice anything different or how our experience is. Let's go get a locker. We just got five rides on Mummy. Um, first two times we did in the single riders line and it took about 15 and then 20 minutes for the wait. And then the other two times, or the other three times we did it, it was about under 10 minutes for each of the rides. It was like 
eight minutes, seven minutes, and like nine minutes for all three of those. Amazing. Um, the ride itself definitely feels slower in the treasure room and the slow moving dark ride portions. My lens is fogging up right now because it's just raining. It's still drizzling out. So what's crazy is the line started like all the way in the front of the queue and the single rider line started kind of by the front as well and I thought, wow, this is going to take forever. Somehow the line was moving really quick. I don't know if everyone's just taking photos in the line, but it was moving. Um, not too many changes with the ride. The, the bug room, no more 3D bugs, new projection screens and everything. Um, the braking there is slightly better depending on where you sit on the, the seat like in the car, but um, mostly it's the same, rough braking. Um, also, the fire room is slightly better um, with the braking. They redid the ceiling. Um, there's, in the beginning of the ride, um, the mummy, when he comes out of his tomb, he's got like very fluid motion, new lighting over there. Um, Reggie, the, the white moving mummy, he's a whole new design for the animatronic, and he's talking now. Um, like You can see his mouth open and close. Um, just some other slow or uh, small updates throughout the ride. Um, when you're going through the treasure room, all the mummies pop out at the same time now. There's a new mist effect that they blow, but I don't really get wet in there anymore like I used to, so I think the mist is just for show. Um, as the, the wall thing closes in before you go into the bug room, you can hear like a tomb sound that they have, like a new sound effect. Um, the rotation, the transition before the launch is the exact same. And then there's a new lighting, like new sparkling lights before you launch, and it's really cool. It's really neat. And then the ride felt like it was going a little bit slower in the main coaster portion of the ride. Probably just a few miles an hour less than it used to. Um, I did it in the back, the front, the middle, so I've had like all the seats on the ride. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, you know, it was, it was pretty, pretty good. Um, the updates, I do like them, I'm just hoping doesn't break down as much as I heard it's been breaking down. Also, um, in the fire room, when he breaks the glass, there's a new audio for that. And yeah, he looks the audio, the lighting, and the movement of the animatronics are new and it's like really smooth, so I like it. I like the changes. Nothing new in the queue that I could see. And yeah, that's all I can really see about the ride. That's all I remember from my ride throughs that I could point out. If I remember anything else, I'll throw it in the video. As we're heading around studios, it's slightly raining. This drink tent has some menus on it. I don't know if this has been here or if it was just added. There's some rumors that say the Monsters Cafe that's torn down is going to be transformed into a Minions Cafe. So we will see how accurate those rumors are. Um, yeah, I have no clue. And, I mean, we have Minions on the construction wall, so I'd assume it's probably going to happen. We have some new game tents over here for Horror Nights. This one has some traditional Halloween backdrops. And then we have a basketball one. It's now. Give me your belt. Yeah. Not right. And we have some neat prizes over here. And neat looking games. And then we have these basketball ones as well. And of course, we have another house portal over here. And this one is for the Spirits of the Coven, which is the Witch House. You can see it through the thing. Definitely Spirits of the Coven. We also have another food truck, and this is the menu over here for the food truck. So looks like over here you can get a universal gameplay pass, which is something interesting. I guess you could play a lot of the games with the pass. I didn't know that. It does look like they're letting people play the games that were trying out, possibly. I don't know. Yeah, so they're letting those two games you can play. You gotta pay for them right now, and you win a prize. And over here we also have the stanchions by the house portal. This is for the uh, Spirits of the Coven maze. They have all the queues set up for it. Shrek is also supposed to be replaced by a Minions attraction, possibly a moving walkway type conveyor thing for the villain con. But um, over there where the old Shrek and Donkey Mean Greet was, that's moved to the DreamWorks destination. You can meet them there now, and Fiona's there. Here's another look at the queue set up with all the stanchions. There's a lot of them, a lot of switchbacks here. Great Pride Rocket has a new th song added to the secret list. If you type 666, you get some kind of Chucky song. I want to ride it and uh, let you guys know how it was, but uh, it's down for weather right now. It's just raining, so they closed the ride, but um, it was lightning before. We might come back later to Studios After Islands and um, show you guys, like, review the new song that was added just in the Halloween time for the Halloween season. They added that song, probably for Horror Nights. 
Adventure. Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna head to Islands of Adventure. We'll show you the last scare zone on the way out. This one's called the Horrors of Halloween. Kind of see Pumpkin Lord all lit up last night and the uh, pumpkins and the trusses. But each like set piece here is representing a uh, different zone. So this one's supposed to be Sweet Revenge. This one here is supposed to be the Scarecrow Zone. And then we have uh, some netting all around the pumpkins in here. And then of course we have the Graveyard Scare Zone. So this is representing Graveyard Deadly Unrest. And then over here, this one here has got like a witch hat. And it's supposed to be representing the uh, Conjure the Dark Scare Zone. And then here's where Pumpkin Lord will be. He will greet you as you enter the zone. Over here we have another house entrance. And this one's going to be for Hellblock Horror. How about the signage? As we come from this side of the zone, you can see the new LED sign. The new neon sign that they added on the trusses. This is the same one that was here last year. It has returned. And also as I passed through, I noticed something interesting. This light right here, actually both of these lights were left on. You can see them flashing. They uh, have some projections. This one's projecting on the set piece. The other one's projecting on the building. We'll see it later when it's darker out. Also this fence has a 31 on it. As we head to Islands of Adventure, we have this new advertisement at the exit of Universal Studios for Horror Nights. We have one of these in Islands of Adventure 2, which we saw last night. And we'll show you it again later tonight as we exit Islands. But yeah, pretty cool. Looks like it stopped raining as we enter Islands. Um, yesterday we had half of this with uh, covering the scaffolding, and now it looks like all of the, the scaffolding is fully covered. So the Porta Entry Christmas shop, as you can see, is having a little refurbishment to the outside of the store. But you can still enter it, the store is still open. Apparently a lot of the outside attractions are still down because of the weather delay. But it should be passing soon, so a lot of this stuff should reopen very soon. The archway here, still disconnected. I think it was because they were uh, refurbishing the carousel, but that's been open for a long time now, so I don't know why they haven't fixed the archway yet. We're just gonna keep heading around. Since we're probably not gonna look at updates around the entire park and islands today, check out yesterday's video. We covered more stuff in islands last night. We have the Griffin still behind construction walls. Hopefully they're just repaving the uh, concrete by him. Other than that, not any other updates really with him. We're gonna go head over to the boutique store. See if there's any uh, Horror Night merch that I can show you guys. Yeah. It says about a 30 minute wait, or yeah, 35 minutes for Poseidon's Fury. We're almost at the All Hallows Eve boutique. We have some construction walls by Sinbad. We don't know what's going on. It's been like that for a while. We can't be functioning with that. Let's head into the boutique though. They have a lot of the same merch that they've had for a while. They have the fanny packs over here. They have the little blue sipper right over here on a display. Some candles. We've already smelled all those candles. New poster over here, like a wall piece. A couple of new pieces of merchandise. The new shirt here. We've shown you these at the other merch locations already though. They have some screamers in the boutique as well. As you can see that's the house shirt down here and the house shirt's over here as well. We have some studio screamers on this show. The Frankenstein popcorn bucket for Frankenstein Day. We have a bunch of them. These are way bigger than they look in pictures. These things are huge. I don't know how I could put it into perspective. Here is a Frankenstein and here is a studio screamer box figure. That's to put it into perspective. The studio Screamers are about the same size as last year's figures, if you have any of those. But yeah, these things are huge difference. We have a new display here in the boutique with the candles and some sprays. It's right here by the checkout counter. And more Frankenstein popcorn buckets as well. It's been a while since I've been in the Hogsmeade area. We're gonna check on Velocicoaster and come back to Hagrid's. Looks like we're just getting out of the weather code right now. So um, by the time we get to Velocicoaster, there should be reopening and then we get to hit Hagrid's right after that. Hagrid's actually takes the longest to get out of a weather delay out of all the attractions at the resort. Um, Hagrid's, they, uh, the team members have to walk the track, make sure there's no debris that can injure any riders and make sure nothing, no parts of the ride are damaged. 
Velocicoaster is a much um, shorter ride, so it can uh, they could check the ride a lot easier and a lot quicker. So it'll take about 15 minutes after you hear the weather codes for them to uh, start cycling and testing and making sure it's okay. Hagrid's takes about 30 to 40 minutes for that. So we're gonna head to Velocicoaster. By the time we get off of Velocicoaster, because it should be a short wait, we can jump right onto Hagrid's. Looks pretty quiet in this walkway. I haven't seen it this quiet in like a while. All right, let's jump in the queue and wait for it to open. It should open very shortly. Looks like the queue isn't too bad. Heading out of the queue, the ride's reopening, but it looks like Single Rider's about to reopen as well. We're gonna head back in line. They haven't opened singles yet. We said 25 minutes wait, so there should be a walk on. And now they just opened singles, so we're back out of the normal line. Now let's head over. And it should be a walk on. So we're heading in now. So because the line was so short in single riders, we hopped on single riders twice. Now we're gonna go check on Haggard's. Now apparently Universal Studios closes at eight tonight instead of nine. So they both don't close at the same time, probably because of horror night rehearsals. So we are going to do Haggard's, maybe once or twice depending on the line. Hopefully singles is open. We'll go to studios before closing and maybe come back to islands or we might just head out after that, we'll see. Haggard's has a 50 minute wait. It looks like single riders are open, so we're gonna hop on. It looks like they're setting something up in Hogsmeade over here. We have 10 minutes till studios closes, so we jumped out of the line for Haggard. We were about to board, but we decided since this closes later, we'll come back here. I'm just going to check on Horror Nights real quick. We're going to run over to studios before the park closes. We can get into the gate, hop on Rip Rap Rocket, listen to the new song, and then we'll walk around the park. So let's go do it. So I sprinted off the Haggard's line. I had like seven minutes to get here, and I got to the gate with one minute to spare and I dashed a rocket and got in line. We just listened to Chucky's Color Ride, the secret code 666 on the secret menu. As you can see, I'm still sweating. But um, the, the song is really cool, a nice horror overlay just in time for horror nights. I liked it. You hear some knife sounds while on the ride. He tries to kill you, say he's his friend to the end. And um, at the end, he's like, yeah, you made it this time, but not next time. And then. He advertised the new show, season two of his show is on Wednesday, October 5th on the Sci-Fi's when it starts. This is really cool, I highly recommend listening to the Chucky overlay, it's pretty neat. So why did I leave Hagrid's to go ride Rocket and get a headache? Well I did it for you guys, so I can cover the new song. I wouldn't have made it if I didn't pick up, like, if I didn't put the camera in the bag on the way here, and if I filmed on the way here before I wrote it, I would have missed out on my rides. So that's why I'm picking up after, but make sure you like and subscribe to the video. To show you you uh, support the channel and you appreciate what I do because I'm trying to cover all these updates for you guys so you guys are the most prepared when you come to Halloween Horror Nights and you guys know what to expect leading up to the event. Now there are two haunted houses having rehearsals tonight. We have The Weekend and Universal Monsters. So we're going to see if we can see any um, cast people outside of their house just huddling around or maybe some creative people that we could talk to. And also, here's the weekend bar. We've shown you this in one of our last videos, but this is what it looks like at night all lit up. The weekend bar is by Transformers and Mel's. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty. And here's the menu of drinks that they have here. Pause the screen and take a look at what they serve at the bar. And here's a closer look at the art. The tour guides walking around. So that uh, lighting in the front zone I saw while running through, so we'll look at it in the way out. But, um... Yeah, we're just gonna see if any lighting in the zones is left on or anything, anything to spot that we could uh, point out to you guys while they set up for the night and practice the uh, lighting and stuff for horror nights. Most likely we won't see too much. They like to do things like a little after hours in the park. But um, I think we might see Nightmare here, a few rehearsings, we'll find out. You see this lighting here pointing towards the barn. It's gonna be crazy all lit up. Can't wait to see what it looks like. It might be hard to see, but I just noticed this truck in the Scarecrow Zone has a body in the back of the bed. I didn't see that earlier. We've covered this fountain, but this thing looks beautiful at night all lit up. If this zone had no lights, it wouldn't be good for photos or videos, but it would be amazing for some scares at night. 
I'm assuming they'll probably turn on lights tonight, but we had rehearsals yesterday, so maybe not. Let's see if there's anything going on by Kid Zone. And also, all these food tents at night, we have covered them at night already, so we won't go too in depth and cover them as much today. It's so dead in Kid Zone. I thought I'd see some movement going on around here, but maybe it'll be going on backstage. And we're not allowed backstage, we're not gonna go backstage, obviously. I'm by the ball factory. I don't hear any sounds coming out from backstage, although I think I hear some loud booming sounds, so I think Nightmare Fuel's rehearsing. And we can actually hear it because it's so quiet. So we're gonna head over there. See if we see Nightmare Fuel. You can see over there, that's the weekend cast. They just walked right by me. I didn't want to film any of them because they're not supposed to be filmed right now. I don't want to put them out in public when they're not in their HHN roles. But um, basically, I wasn't allowed to exit from the bridge. Uh, security said I got to exit back the way we came. So we're going to see if we can hang out in New York and see if we see anything. So we're just heading around the park, seeing if we see anything else. I don't think I see any zone lighting in uh, Hollywood. It just looks the same from here. Um, nightmare fuel. When I was over there, I didn't notice anything. It just looked like normal white lights or whatever. Let's see if we see anything across the lagoon though. Yeah, it looks like normal just stage lights are on. I think a lot of people have filmed them doing rehearsals, so they're gonna wait till later. The pumpkin food tents all, the, all lit up all the way over there. So we were trying to go down to New York and then I was talking to the show director for the water show, which was really cool to speak to him. And then uh, security says I gotta go out Hollywood because they're doing their sweep right now, so we're heading out of the park. Before we head out of the park, we're gonna go look at this flashing lights over here. They're right up at the entrance zone. As you can see, we have uh, park security over there, so we can't go anywhere past them. So this is as far as we're gonna be able to go tonight. And we have some pumpkins that are lit up as well. Just wanted to give you one last look before we head out of the park and end our construction update for the week. Our last Horror Nights construction this year. And then we'll be at the event on Friday. See all this. There's just some cool flickering lights. And they have a flickering light on the showpiece and one on the building. The frame rate did not pick up. It's just like more of like a strobe kind of flicker. That's why it's uh, flashing kind of weird. And here's another look at those pumpkins that are all lit up in this scare zone. I don't see any other ones that are lit up right now. So um, the other park's pretty much closed. You won't really be able to get any updates from there. There was a purple beacon in the sky. Um, I just saw it on for a second. Now it's not there. What if they're doing lighting tests? Unless it's just random other stuff. I doubt they're gonna play park-wide loop music like they did yesterday. Um, yeah, I don't know. I got some posted on my social media and that last video that I uploaded also has the music in it. All my whole experience from last night is really cool. Glad I was able to make it out here. Like I said, just look out for my uh, opening night video on Friday, Horror Night. It's a big one. Stay tuned for that. That's gonna be the next time I'm at the parks this week. If you guys come on Thursday, um, Thursday we'll probably have the trivia store open, so definitely check it out. If you're a team member, be safe and responsible during team member previews tomorrow. And we're gonna show you guys the Red Coconut Club and the escape rooms. There's only nine minutes till the other park closes, but we'll just do Hagrid's another time. Like I said, we're just gonna show you some stuff in City Walk. So it looks like there's a private event going on in City Walk right now. But um, we have the great movie escape, is what we're here to check out. And we're still about to go in this area, just not into the restaurant. Great movie escape is an escape room that's supposed to open in the fall. That's what was announced in like June. And they put up this signage and nothing else has been added to it. No other details have been announced, but there will be pass holder benefits. We just don't know ticket prices yet or anything else really about it when it's gonna open. We do know they're gonna have Jurassic World and Back to the Future escape rooms. I also heard that if it's a success, they might even add a Jaws escape room. So we'll keep you posted and we'll keep you guys updated with everything that they announce and uh, with the escape room. We check on it every video. So yeah. And now we're coming up to the Red Coconut Club, which is being rethemed to the Dead Coconut Club and it's having monsters. We have these cool banners that are up. And we did look through the glass 
one of the last times we were here. We did see some neat stuff from the inside. That banner's flipped over. Um, but yeah, you see the curtain they have to the left. This huge gap where you can see inside. It's pretty neat in there. And on the left window, there's a gap on the right where you can see a lot of stuff. Looks pretty similar to the last time we saw it. Looks like on the way out, we have some merch across from the theater for Horror Nights and City Walk. There's a lot of the other merch we've seen around the parks today. So like I said, that's going to be it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure to comment down below, like the video, and subscribe. And I tend to post late sometimes, so make sure you follow my social media pages to get the most accurate and up-to-date information. And that's in the description, but it's also on Twitter at Ethan Hershaft and on Instagram at Florida Theme Park Picks. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.